Hey Guitar Warriors, one of the biggest things I notice a lot of guitar players struggling with is navigating their fretboard. In this video, I'm going to show you how to master your guitar's fretboard once and for all. I'm Adam and this is the Warrior Guitar System. Quick disclaimer, this video is part one of a two part series. It's imperative that you watch this video in its entirety before heading to part two. Understanding the fretboard of a guitar can seem like an overwhelming task. For example, my guitar has 24 frets and six strings. That's 144 notes that I must memorize to play my guitar effectively. But what if I told you that was all just an illusion? Instead of having 144 note possibilities, there's actually only 12. That's right, only 12. You might be sitting there going, but Adam, you just told me there could be up to 144 notes. Where do you get 12? Well, herein lies the confusion when trying to master the fretboard. It's something that I struggled with for many years until I figured out a few tips that took the mystery right out of it. The first thing you have to understand is the musical alphabet. Grasping this musical alphabet is a crucial first step towards true fretboard mastery. By the end of this video, you're going to know exactly what the musical alphabet is, how it works, and how to apply it to the guitar so you can master your fretboard right away. A common objection I hear from most students goes something like this. But Adam, I play by ear. I don't need to know all this stuff. Well my friend, I call bullshit on that. Playing by ear is just one piece of the puzzle and relying solely on your ear ultimately limits your guitar playing, making you what I would call a one-trick pony. But if you want to expand your horizons, play with more confidence, and be more creative, I suggest you keep watching. So what is the musical alphabet? In a nutshell, the musical alphabet describes the spectrum of sounds available to us in Western music. We break these sounds up into 12 notes and call it the chromatic scale. But don't let the name scare you. The word chromatic comes from the Greek word chroma, which means colors and the term scale simply means a sequence of notes. So you can think of the chromatic scale as a color spectrum of notes. Here's why it's important to know this. The musical alphabet, or chromatic scale, is the fundamental element to all Western music. It applies to every instrument and is the starting point for creating other scales, such as the major scale, all intervals, triads, chords, and modes. The sounds within the musical alphabet are represented by letters. Like the English alphabet, the first letter in the chromatic scale is the note A. The next note is B, then C, then D, E, F, and finally G. From here, the alphabet starts over at A. But wait, that's only seven notes, not 12, so where's the rest? These seven notes are known as natural notes but there are actually five more notes in between these seven known as accidentals. You've probably come across accidentals in your guitar playing as they are represented by sharps and flats. So the full chromatic scale looks something like this. A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, and G sharp. From there, it starts back over at A and then repeats. The relationship or distance between each note is called a half step. Therefore, the distance between the first A and the last A is 12 half steps. These 12 half steps make up what's known as an octave. Have you ever noticed the 12th fret on your guitar has two dots on the fretboard instead of one? That's to show you where the new octave starts. In other words, the open fifth string is tuned to the note A. Using the chromatic scale up to the 12th fret of the 5th string, you'll see that that note is also in A, 12 frets apart to the next octave range. The only difficult part about memorizing this scale is remembering that there's no sharp between the notes B and C as well as E and F. However, they are still a half step apart. This sequence can repeat in both directions essentially forever. As the sequence repeats, the sound continues to go higher and higher in pitch as you progress through the octaves. The term octave describes a sound that vibrates at twice the frequency when going up in pitch, or half the frequency when going down in pitch. So if the open A string vibrates at 440 Hz, that is, it vibrates 440 times per second, 
then the A note at the 12th fret vibrates at 880 Hz. On the piano, all of the white keys represent the natural notes A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and then all the black keys are your accidentals A sharp, C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, and G sharp. You'll notice how the layout of the keys reflects the repeating pattern of the chromatic scale and the notes continue to go higher in pitch when you play from left to right. At first glance, it doesn't appear that the notes on the fretboard repeat in the same kind of pattern that they do on a piano, and there's certainly no white or black keys that we can use as a reference. But before we look at how we can apply this to the guitar, let's first recall the letter names of each string. In standard tuning, the notes are tuned as followed. The skinny string, also known as the first string, is tuned to an E note. The second string is tuned to a B note, the third string to a G note, the fourth to a D note, the fifth to an A note, and that fat sixth string is tuned to another E note. One way to remember this is with this ditty, Easter bunnies get drunk after Easter. Now we can apply the chromatic scale to the guitar using the tuning of each string as a starting point. For the simplicity's sake, we'll start with the open A string and use the chromatic scale to go fret by fret. Starting with the open A string, we have A, First fret we have A sharp, then B, then third fret we have C. Remember there's no sharp note between B and C, but it's still a half step apart because it's only one fret apart. Fourth fret we have C sharp, then D, D sharp on the sixth fret, then E, and F. Same thing applies here. There's no sharp between E and F, but it's still a half step apart. Then you have F sharp, G, G sharp, and A on the 12th fret. And that's it. The pattern from here repeats. So 13th fret is like 1st fret. 14th fret is like 2nd fret. So we have A sharp, so we have A, then A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and finally A. Now I already pointed out my guitar has 24 frets. Yours probably doesn't have 24 frets. You might have 19 or 22 or something like that. So you may have fewer notes to remember. But essentially, you only have to remember the first 12 notes because it repeats. Now remember I said that 12 half steps make up the octave. Well, we can just prove that, right? Because we went up 12 half steps to the 12th fret, the double dotted fret. And you can hear the similarity between these notes, between the open note and the 12th fret. It's the same note, but this one at the 12th fret, this A, vibrates at twice the speed as this one in open A. Now you may notice some of these notes don't sound that good to you, but that's really only because you're hearing them out of context and without a musical frame of reference. But the fact of the matter is, each of these notes are equally important and serves a variety of musical functions. Now let's apply it to another string. We just finished the open A string, now let's take it down to the B string. The cool thing about the chromatic scale is because the notes don't change order, they go in the same order all the time, we can start it from any position. So from the open B string, we would first go to the first fret, which is a C note. So B to C, it's a half step. Then from C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp on the ninth fret, A, A sharp, and B. And again, from here, from this 12th fret, it repeats again all the way to the end. And again, B note, B note, B note. Now you can repeat this process with the rest of the strings. And by the way, anytime you play notes that are going up in pitch like this, 
that's called ascending. Anytime you play notes that are going down in pitch, that's called descending. We'll need to know that later on. The goal right now is to memorize the chromatic scale itself and not necessarily the fretboard. It would be way too difficult and time consuming to remember every note of every fret on every string. But there are three things that you can do over the next week or two to help get the memorization process of the entire fretboard started. First, download the worksheet for this video so you can practice this stuff throughout the week. You can find it on this page by clicking the button below this video. I'll also put a link in the description box for all you watching this on YouTube. Next, go through the entire chromatic scale from the open string all the way to the last fret. Remember to go slow and say each note as you play it. This will help solidify the chromatic scale itself. You can go over one or two strings a day as part of your warm-up routine. Finally, download the blank fretboard diagram by clicking the button below this video. Use this diagram to plot out the notes string by string, fret by fret. There are a total of six blank fretboard diagrams, one for each string. I hope that you enjoyed this video and got some good insight from it. Please hit the like button for me, leave your comments, and share it with a fellow guitar player. I look forward to seeing you all again real soon, and until next time, keep on keeping on. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, but before you go, hit the subscribe button below so you can get more free guitar training videos that you won't find anywhere else. Also, I'd love to hear from you. Head on over to our Facebook page and leave us your feedback for a chance to win a free live one-on-one -on -one guitar training session with yours truly.